So that we're going to start this presentation by what's new in reporting services, and it's not a whole lot new in reporting services, but one notable feature I want to make sure I bring up to you as well. Uh, this allows, this, this feature is self-service alerting, and it allows us to basically, an integrated mode in SharePoint is to build alerts on certain items. So you as a developer can decide, I want to make this gross profit margin uh, an alertable object. And if people want to, they can say, if the gross profit falls below a certain level, then send me an email alerting me of that, of that number. That's a new reporting services feature. It is only supported presently inside of SharePoint, uh, the, the reporting services in integrated mode. So one quick note about that. It shows up under regular, the regular like report builder and exports uh, subscription option right there. And the, the emails are pretty fancy looking actually. They work, they work pretty well. Uh, so this is a great way if, if your CEO, all he cares about is a certain gross profit margin number or a turnover rate has gotten to a certain level. This is a great way to, to basically be alerted of single numbers and not have to download a whole report each day. But that's not really the why you guys are here today. The why you guys are here is really the, the big reporting services feature, which is called Crescent. Now Crescent is going to rely on something called the uh, uh, analysis services and tabular mode. It's also called the BISM, the BI semantic model. So what this allows us to do is allows us to create data sets against any data source that you see on the bottom here. So whether it be things like Dynamics, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, files, it doesn't matter. We can bring those data sets together. Now, what I mean by that is ultimately your HR manager can do self-service BI. Your HR manager can grab some data from Access, God forbid, some data from Excel, and bring all this data together, put it into a big pot, and then write reports on top of it and dashboards inside of Excel. Now this is going to be mandatory for Crescent to work. Crescent is a new reporting platform, which I'm going to show you in a moment, that really re that relies on that relies on, on you having access to a, a analysis versus tabular model. So this, this tabular model I'm mentioning here, the BI semantic model, relies on analysis services to be installed a certain way. So when you're installing Denali, the next version of SQL Server, and you want you select analysis services, it's going to ask you, do you want analysis services to be in tabular mode or in multidimensional traditional mode? So it, it's basically two modes for analysis services that do very close to the same thing, but the way they handle it is a little bit different. For example, inside of tabular mode, there's no MDX, uh, at least on, on, in the forefront. They use the DAX language, the data expression language. It's also, this is, uh, and also things are brought into memory more and can be faster in memory, but from a scalability perspective, the classic mode is, is much better. So let's talk about when do we use what. So let's imagine we have Tom. Tom's a sales manager, and Tom wants to get some data from Access, some data from Excel, maybe some data from the web page, and he wants to bring it together and build a report. Well, in this case, what Tom's going to do is he's going to use Power Pivot for Excel. It's for him only. He doesn't want to engage, have to engage IT to get this answer. All he wants to do is get the answer and get out. So Power Pivot in Excel is a great option for Tom. However, the report that Tom builds is getting more and more popular. And over time, he wants to make sure that other people can see that same report. Well, this is where Tom can publish that report over to SharePoint, and now everybody can now see that report. Previously, Tom can email that report to everybody, but everybody's looking at stale data at this point. They all have to hit the refresh button to make this work. So, now, so in SharePoint, though, SharePoint can handle the refreshing of this report. So, great question already here from, uh, from, from, uh, from the gallery here. Looks like uh, one person's asking, is there any idea when Crescent will work on Analysis Services Classic, classic mode. So let's answer that next. So basically, what he's referring to is the UDM. And this is a question from Leo here. So what we're seeing here on the far right is as Tom builds this report and he wants to really scale this thing, he has two choices. Now keep in mind, at this point, we're more into corporate BI mode. Tom is becoming less of a player now, and that report is becoming so popular that it needs to become a more corporate uh, entity. So we have that tabular model, or BISM, that's, that's basically taking Visual Studio for, for, um, for Power Pivot and putting Power Pivot on top of Visual Studio. 
or we can use the traditional model. Well, the traditional model, which is that which Leo is referring to, is something called the UDM, the Unified Dimensional Model. This is the best model for scaling. However, Project Crescent at, at the release time of Denali is only going to be supported on, on the BISM or the tabular model. So that's a, that's, that's a quick note. Uh, however, you will see a Crescent being supported on UDM eventually. Okay, so that kind of shows us again on the far left, it's more personal BI. And as we get more and more important, this report becomes more and more important, we then go into SharePoint mode and eventually a developer may do the same thing inside of Visual Studio using the tabular mode inside of analysis services. All right, so we have two models. We have, uh, now for Excel here, all we have to have is Excel 2010 and the plugin, the Power Pivot plugin for Excel. Now keep in mind, what, the, why this relates to, 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 to Crescent is everything that we're about to do is going to, is going to go, Crescent's going to go on top of. So we can't do Crescent until we have either a Power Pivot model or a tabular model. So I'm going to show you how to build those in a second. So everything we're talking about so far, though, in Power Pivot is free until we deploy over to SharePoint. I say free. You're already paying for Excel. The plugins, the plugins free, and then we deploy the SharePoint next. And that plugin, that, that 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 deployment to SharePoint requires SharePoint Enterprise Edition. So this allows us to scrub lots of data very, very efficiently, and it's really meant for a BA. So the Excel interface is really meant for a BA. However, if I want to use BIDS, the Business Intelligence Development Studio, they now have an option for you in Denali. So what we can do is we can create projects in a tabular mode, and this looks just like Tom's experience in Excited Excel, except now we're in a Visual Studio environment. So things like version control, source control, you know, bug integration, all those kind of things are what developers really crave and need. To do that, you, you do have that. You can actually open up Tom's uh, Power Pivot spreadsheet and import it into a bids environment and then deploy that over to announce services also. So a whole lot of things we can, we can do there. The Power Pivot experience, that this again, this is meant for Tom as a, as a lower end user, he can still do things that are, that are uh, you can still build hierarchies. He can do almost everything that I can do from a, from a bids environment, but inside of an Excel experience. Now, what they've done ultimately is they've hidden a lot of the advanced options. So it feels like Excel. It's all one file. And I can ultimately save, save this up to SharePoint. It makes it very, very easy to go. 